hope you're all doing well greetings from sunny south africa <laughs> and may the joy of the lord be with you as i speak and in fact may the anointing of joy come upon you as i speak because you know we're here to share the good news of jesus to share about the joy of being in the kingdom of god and how effective that kingdom is and how it's advancing and uh, we are soldiers in that kingdom we are called to reign and rule with christ and he's given us the ability the capacity the anointing and the power to do that it's also given us armor so this is the next part of our series from ephesians 6 where it talks about the armor of god that we're called to take on the armor of god and today we're going to look at the next part of the armor and it's a part that is particularly used for protection the shield of faith so what is this shield of faith um why do we need a shield? That may, may sound a bit uh, dumb, like why do we need a shield? But we need a shield because there is a battle going on around us. And again, just to reiterate, Satan comes to rob, kill and destroy, but Jesus came to have abundant life. So if you're not experiencing abundant life, it's because the devil's coming against you and robbing from you. You know, God does not send sickness. He doesn't curse us. He's a good, loving, kind father, and he wants to bless us, his children. And if, if we're not experiencing that, it's because there's warfare going on. And we need to enter and engage in that warfare through the tools and the armor and the capacity that God's given us in the Holy Spirit. This is good news because it means we can overcome. It means we can expect to live a blessed and victorious life. And that's what I want to share with you today. By the way, if you like these videos, please click on the um, subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner, the red button. But I also encourage you to turn on the notifications so that whenever I post, you get notice of a new post. I'm, I'm going to try to post every Friday, ready for the weekend. And I encourage you to share this with the fr your friends. This purpose of me sharing is to share my experience over 30 years in the mission field and in ministry seeing people i've seen people by faith i've seen people healed i've seen people delivered from demons many many times i've seen the dead raised i've had miraculous uh, miracles of provision i've spoken into the heavenly realms i've seen storms stilled um, amazing things uh, so, so these things are real signs and wonders are real and i know there's this anti signs and wonders thing going on in some parts of the church that i want to just say a powerless gospel is not the gospel at all. Jesus said you will confirm, you will go preach the word and it will be confirmed with signs and wonders. And I've seen those signs and wonders and I want to share this with you as God's beloved children. I want to share this with you so you too can move in these miraculous things that we need to expect. You know, the kingdom of God is supernatural. Jesus imparted, imputed and gave us the Holy Spirit that we should receive power and perform signs and wonders. So the world will look and be astounded. They look and they say, wow, there's truth in what God said. So today we're going to look at the shield of faith. How can you use the shield of faith? What is the shield of faith? And um, it, it's actually good news. So firstly, just to say a shield protects. It helps us to, to be safe. So we, we can hide behind a shield when there's, when there's warfare going on. So... Um, the shield is also though used as an offensive weapon. I don't know if you've ever seen those like Viking movies. Not only do they hide behind the shield when the arrows come, they also take the shield and they smack the enemy. <laughs> so you can use the shield as a as a defense, but also as an attacking weapon. And let me just say the the shield that God says take put on the full armor of God, and take up the shield of faith. So it's something that is given to us by God. It's not something that you can make. It's not something that you have to generate. It's a gift from God. This armor is a gift from God. He's just saying, you guys need to take it up and you need to use it. Okay, it's not a passive gift. It's not for us to hide and cower behind. It's for us to advance against the enemy, to advance the kingdom of God. We are kingdom people. So the question is, have you taken up the shield of faith? Now, quite, quite often people are like, well, I don't know if I have enough faith. But this, is, this shield of faith is a gift from God. It's not about your faith. This is, this is about God's faithfulness and God's gift to us. 
So throughout the Old Testament, in all the Psalms, Psalm 7, Psalm 5, Psalm 32, um, there's repeated over and over. It says, God is our shield. God is our hiding place. God is our safe place. He's our refuge. He's, the, he's our shield. He, he puts a, a, a fire around us to protect us. So this is just taking up this theme that actually God is our shield. God is our protector. And uh, God recognizes that we need protection because right now we live in between times when the enemy is prowling around like a lion waiting for someone to devour it. Satan and his demons are out there. There's, there's a, a war going on, not between God and the devil, but upon the earth now. We still live in that fallen time when the devil is, is, is allowed to prowl around. He's an outlaw. He's outside the law. He's a robber and he's a liar. And we are called to take authority over him to fight against him. So one of the main things the shield does, it says pick up the shield of God because it's going to protect you from the fiery darts of the evil one. So we need to understand that this shield has a specific purpose. This shield of faith has a specific purpose to protect us from the fiery arrows of the enemy. Now we know the enemy is the devil and his demons. So what are these fiery arrows that he fires at us? You know, Psalm 91, it talks about that we will, we will be protected from the fiery arrows. These fiery arrows are arrows of accusation, arrows of condemnation. You see, the devil, our enemy, the evil one, is, is Satan. Satan means the accuser. He loves to accuse the brethren. He loves to accuse and condemn and find fault. And those are the fiery things, you know, because sometimes, like, he fires stuff at us, telling us that we're useless, that we're not good enough, we're not right enough. And they stick in us like barbs, you know, arrows, you know, just don't go right through you. Sometimes they stick in you. They're painful. They're fiery. They hurt you. And these are the, this is what the shield of faith is there for. So when the enemy comes and accuses us and finds fault with us and tells us we're not used to us, or sorry, that we are useless, that God can't use us, that who are we that we think we could represent God? God actually says, put up the shield of faith. And I'm going to show you what that faith is. Faith in what? <laughs> what is that faith? It is, it's, it's, it's not the faith that you probably think, but it's a faith to overcome the enemy. Revelations 12 10 says, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. But it says, he has been hurled down to the earth and we have overcome him, triumphed over him through the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and that we don't care for our lives so much as to give them up unto death. We, we, don't, we have actually died and been born again into Christ. We are new creations. See, Satan wants to disqualify you. And that's the protection. You need protection from that accusation, from all those sense and feelings of unworthiness, of uselessness, of sinfulness. See, Satan wants to get you to focus on your sin instead of on your righteousness. You see, we are no longer slaves to sin. We are now slaves to righteousness. We are righteous through the blood of Jesus. So his attitude, Satan's attitude, is if you throw enough mud, it's going to stick. <laughs> but the good news is you've got a shield to protect you against all the mud that he throws against you. And that's good news. We, we, we need that protection. You know, we all have our own personal struggles. You know, I've, I've battled over the years, like initially, with not feelings of I had to pay back God. I had to do stuff to pay him back for my salvation, that I was never worthy enough. It was like a false humility that actually totally undermined the finished work of the cross. So the devil would always remind me of that. And I would, I just couldn't move in the power of God because I never thought I was good enough. I want to say to you today, and I, and I speak this over you now, you are good enough. If you are saved and born again and in Jesus, he's done everything necessary to make you good enough. If you haven't done that, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I just want to ask you, do that now. It's quite simple. You can just ask Jesus into your life. Repent, say, Lord, 
forgive me of my sins. I've changed my mind about who you are. Come into my life today. And your life will change because God is faithful. If you believe in your heart and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and he died for you, you will be saved. So if you've never done that, that's a starting point of protection. If you are not in a safe place and you want protection, start by giving your life to Jesus. He's good, kind and loving and he wants to do good for you. He died for you. He purchased you. You were so valuable to him that he died for you and for me. <laughs> That's good news. That's such good news that whenever I preach the good news gospel of God's grace, God's free gift of love and blessing and favor and empowerment, it's just joy just bubbles up in me. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you for your joy. <laughs> thank you for your grace, Jesus. <laughs> so what is this shield of faith? What is this faith? Now, listen, we could go on into many teachings about faith and there's many different aspects to faith but this faith that is your shield is not your faith okay it's not saving faith it's not the faith you know Ephesians 2 8 you are saved by grace through faith this this is not about your faith this is about the faithfulness of God this is not something you generate you see because if it was God God wouldn't say take up the shield of faith he would say Make the shield of faith. Generate the shield of faith. He doesn't say that. He says, take up the, the shield of faith. Even in Ephesians, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the gift of faith. So faith is something that God gives. Okay, yes, there's a certain amount of personal faith you need to, uh, need to have, but how much faith do you need to be saved? How much faith do you need? Jesus said, faith as small as a mustard seed. <laughs> you don't need a lot of faith, okay? You need just enough faith to say, Jesus, come into my life. That's the faith you need. Because once you have that little bit of faith and say, Jesus, come into my life, then you are born again. And then the gift of faith is just given to you by God. It's just that initial bit of faith which responds to the message of grace. It says, hey, I've heard good news. I've heard the message of grace. I believe. I trust in God. A little bit of faith. Jesus, I don't even know who you are. This was my prayer. Jesus, I don't know who you are, but if you're real, come into my life. A little bit of faith. Faith of the mustard seed got me saved. <laughs> so that's why Jesus said you don't need big faith because he knows that he will be imparting faith to you by the Holy Spirit as a gift. So our, our, our faith, by the way, is belief. There's two aspects to faith. One is believing and the other is trusting. So faith is not something, this faith, this shield of faith, is not something you can generate or make. It's something God gives you. It's a faith is belief in God's goodness. It starts with believing in God's goodness. What is Jesus? They asked Jesus, what is the work that I must do? And he actually said, it's not works, not saved by works. But, but the work of God is this, believe in the one he sent. What you got to do is just have that little bit of belief. So I, I believe in Jesus. I might not know him. I might not understand him. I'm talking about as an unbeliever. But I'm choosing to believe today. Come into my life, Jesus. And then the, the, it changes your whole life, that little bit of belief. Trusting in God's goodness. Belief in the promises of the word. So faith comes about when we believe in the promises of the word. See, every promise, we've, we've talked about this before, every promise is yes and amen in Christ. All the promises in the scriptures are for us. They're good promises. We are victorious. We are healed. We are delivered. We are prosperous. We are mighty. We are called to reign. The, the promises, the, there's just lists and lists of God's promises. And we believe that they're true. We are trusting so another aspect of faith is trusting, not in yourself, not in your religion, not in your works, but trusting that God is good, kind, and loving Father. See, we have the faith like Abraham. See, it actually says he's a father of faith. It's wonderful, by the way. Spend time, if you want to spend time in the Old Testament, spend time looking at Abraham's life. He just prospered in everything he does. He says he's the father of the faithful. In Hebrews 11 lists 
all those faithful men and women who had faith in God. And basically they trusted in God as good, kind and loving. So faith supersedes logic. There's nothing logical about faith. Nothing logical about signs and wonders and miracle. You know, in faith we believe and then we see. In the word it says, no, first I want to see and then I believe. Let me tell you something. You'll never get there in that worldly attitude. But Christian faith is, I choose to believe and then I will see. So if you want to see signs and wonders and miracles, you want to see all the blessings that God has promised us, believe. And they will come to pass. And I, I'm a testimony to that in my own life. I've seen amazing things all over the world. And it, it, it makes me so joyful to be able to share God's faithfulness. See, without faith, we cannot please God. Because faith actually is about being dependent on God. You see, I wake up every day and I say, Lord, today I'm dependent on you, Holy Spirit, who lives in me. It's not about techniques and methods. It's about trusting in God, trusting in His Spirit that lives in us to get us through the day, to, to help us fight the fight, to advance the kingdom of God in our lives. So this protective faith, this shield of faith, it's actually not your faith, okay? Even though you may have faith as a mustard seed, that's not going to protect you. can't hide behind a mustard seed, guys. <laughs> But you can hide behind a shield of faith. And the shield, the faith that I'm talking about, the faith that this, um, that is our protection, that is our shield, is the faith of Jesus. Galatians 2.20, in the King, Old King James Version, which is, which is the version based on grace, says this. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in this body is by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and died for me. For I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be obtained by the law, Christ died for nothing. You see, it's the faith of Christ. And, in, and if you go through and look, in the newer versions it says faith in Christ. But you know, faith in Christ is something you have to, in a sense, generate. It's the faith of Christ that we live by. What do I mean by the faith of Christ? I want to show you that Jesus had faith that we can draw on. And that Galatians 2.20 says, Christ lives in you by the Holy Spirit. Christ lives in you. So you, Jesus in you, the Holy Spirit in you, the Father in you, okay, <laughs> has faith. And you can draw on his faith. <laughs> See, we have faith by the Spirit of God. And we can draw on the faith of Jesus Christ. So Hebrews 12, 2 says, fix your eyes on Jesus. So it says, this, this is what I like about it, is looking upwards, looking withinwards to Jesus Christ. Who lives there. Fix your eyes on Jesus who lives in you, the author and the perfecter of our faith. You see, he is the author. He's the originator of our faith. And he's the perfecter. He's the one that gets it right. It's not about you doing a whole lot of stuff. See, this is really good news, you know. See, Jesus had faith in us. He looked forward from behind the cross, before the cross. He looked forward and said, okay, he knew he was going to do something at the cross that was going to perfectly qualify this, this generation of people for thousands of years to be his people and to move in power, to move in the Holy Spirit, to do signs and wonders, to advance the kingdom to the very ends of this. He had faith in that. He thought he, he had hope, but he also had faith because faith is a now thing. He knew once the cross had taken away our sin, had taken away our disqualifications, had made us righteous, had, had made us a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. He knew he had absolute faith in what was to come. He said, guys, he said, you guys are going to go and do greater things than I do. That is amazing. John 14, 12, you, you know, you are going to do greater things than I'm going to do. You see, that was his faith. He had faith. He said, in, I think it's John 10, he said, you're going to trample on, sorry, Luke 10, you're going to trample on snakes and scorpions. You're going to speak to the storms and the storms are going to be uh, um, stilled. I've done that. I've seen that about five times. 
You know, I was trapped in the Drakensberg, up in the mountains, freezing cold. We couldn't get down, and and we were we were potentially going to die of exposure. And and the people I was with, they were they were battling their faith, and were, and I said, Lord, what am I going to do? He said, Gary, go outside and speak to the storm, like four o'clock in the afternoon, freezing cold rain. Stood outside and I said, in the name of Jesus, storm be stilled. And within five minutes, a blue crack appeared in the sky. The sky opened up and the sunshine came out. We, it took us two hours to walk down the mountain. As we got to the bottom of the mountain, <laughs> so the rain started as we got in our cars and we drove home safe and sound. See, that was faith. That was faith because I'd seen Jesus do it. And I could do it because I had faith. And he had faith in me. That sounds funny. I, I, I kind of drew on that faith. See, Jesus has faith in us. In Mark 16, it says we're going to do signs and wonders and miracles. Raise the dead. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. I've done all those things. I don't know about drinking deadly poison yet. But well, sometimes on mission, feels like some of the food's poisonous. But <laughs> I've never had food poison yet. But... But you see, we can do this, guys. We can do the signs and wonders because Jesus had faith in us because he knew we were going to receive of the Holy Spirit. And we were going to be born again and have power. So he had faith in the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. Do you have that same faith? So I want to just say, just finish off by saying, I'm going to share a couple of points. Again, just remind you, please subscribe, hit the notifications, share this with your friends. Let's encourage one another. So be established in that shield of faith. Believe the word of God. Even if you don't understand it, believe it. Read the New Testament. Understand the Old Testament in light of the New Testament of God's grace, God's righteousness, finished work of the cross given to you. Believe the word of God. If it says something in the word, it's for you. <laughs> You are about the Word and the Word's about you. Know that it's the Holy Spirit in you that bears fruit. It's supernatural. We live a supernatural Spirit-filled life. Grace and faith always go together. Establish yourself in grace. You're saved by grace through faith. Get to understand grace. God's favor. You're, you're God's favorite. <laughs> Trust in the finished work of the cross. Remember, Jesus look, uh, looks to you to look to him. He wants to serve you. He wants you to draw on him. He wants you to draw on his faith and his power. Remember that you are righteous. Nothing can disqualify you anymore from God's favor, from the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you're battling with doubt and double-mindedness, Get together with, with, another, with another Christian and, and pray about it. Confess it. Deal with it, you know. <laughs> Break it. <laughs> Replace a lie with truth. It's good news. Shield of faith. What a wonderful place to hide behind God's faithfulness. He's never going to let us down. And not only hide behind it, but we can smack the enemy with it as well. So I just want to pray for you now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I just pray for each person watching this video. That their faith in your faith and your faithfulness would increase. That is not about what we do. It's about what you have done, Jesus. So Holy Spirit, I just ask for an impartation of supernatural faith today. I take authority in the name of Jesus Christ over all doubt all unbelief, all double-mindedness, I cast it down. And I declare that you, in Jesus, are perfectly qualified to advance the kingdom of God, to live in grace, and the blessed gift of righteousness in Christ. Amen.